more joyful because the Christ candle is lit again. He is risen. There are, are a couple ways today that we can interact. And so I'll, I'll probably say this again as more people come in during greeting. But right here we have the cross. There's a little explanation right there. Uh, but this is going to be our adorning the cross uh, kind of, not what is it called? Workshop, not workshop. What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Station. Here we go. Adorning the cross. Thank you for letting me spend time finding that word. We have all sorts of flowers, and as you're doing so, each flower, each color represents something. And so I encourage you right now, it is not awkward. This is like a free worship time where you're coming to the front. Again, this is not about you, right? It's not about you feeling awkward. This is about you honoring Jesus. And as you're putting it, Jesus, thank you. I praise you. I worship you. As you put a flower, just adding beauty to the cross. And so as we sing, um, feel free. Yeah, come on. Start doing it. But I want to open this up by reading the scripture. And this is the angel telling the good news to the first person. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. For just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with what? Joy and ran to tell his disciples. So we continue that today. Come on now. We sing this. In Christ the Lord, I is found.
you our resurrection life, Lord. So we respond, we don't stay the same. God, as you called out of that grave, God, you call us out too. We respond to you. We sing it. That I was buried beneath my shame. Join your hearts, continue to spread that love and worship. Turn to somebody, give them a high five, give them a hug. Welcome one another.
of our praise just as the song is proclaiming God all the people cry holy 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 is you you are worthy thank you father thank you for going to the cross on our behalf thank you for going to the cross for me for every one of us so grateful so thankful Lord on this Easter Sunday I pray that you would just draw close to us we already are filled with the aroma of your praise in this place the beauty and the splendor of what this day represents corporately as a church personally for our salvation and what it means for our world in a broken and dark place light has broken through and we give you thanks and praise so today father we want to hear from you from your word we want to hear from you through song through greeting through all the things that we do today even through easter egg hunts and breakfasts lord the fellowship of you the body of christ we thank you we thank you lord jesus we lift our friends and family members we know that some even on days like this we remember those who have gone before us perhaps we remember those who are struggling and are dealing with illness even right now lord we pray for your supernatural touch and healing all right i think of eva this morning as she continues to battle cancer and i just pray god you would bring healing to her body may this just be such a glorious day of worship and celebration for her and for so many others lord we lift our community around us Help us, Lord God. Help us continue to be a beacon of light, of your love, of your generosity, of your goodness. To not only the neighbors right around our neighborhood, but our, our neighborhoods where we live. Thank you, Lord, that you send us out to be your representatives. So for the remainder of our time, God, we just give you thanks and praise. <laughs> we, we are so thankful we worship you in your name I pray and everybody say amen and amen I'm going to invite you to be seated online. 
Sorry about that. Take a flower after the, after the, or, or, not take a flower, but, but place another flower. And then at the end of the second service, if you're still around, we would love for you to, uh, to take some flowers home and you can grab some flowers off the cross. And, and for those of you that, uh, um, that submitted names and, and gave so generously for our, our Easter lilies, you're welcome to take one uh, after the service uh, as well. So thank you for giving. Thank you for your faithfulness. Now, God, may you just continue to bless and multiply the giving of your people. Thank you for your goodness, just how much you gave to us. What a privilege it is to give back just a portion. In your name, amen. Just give God another shout of praise. Yes, Lord, you are good. God, we worship you. Would you speak to us, Lord? God, would it not just be another Easter message that goes in one ear and not the other? God, but your mercies are new for us every day. God, and when you are never done, you are never finished with your work within our hearts. Lord. So God, have your way this morning. And God, we're just so grateful to be in this place, a holy place, your sanctuary, in your name. Good. Am I on now? How's that? Is that a little bit better? Perfect. Fantastic. Hey, I hope when you came in this morning, you saw on your chair a little magnet. Yeah, did you see that on your chair? And then with it should have been a little chocolate. Should have been a little chocolate. Now, here's the thing. On any normal Sunday, uh, here, Chuck, you can have my extra chocolate right here. Oh, that was a bad toss. That was a bad toss. On any normal Sunday, uh, any normal Sunday, I, I would say just pillage all the, all the chairs afterwards and get all the rest of the chocolates and take them home. And don't say you don't do that, because when we did this on friend days, there were several baskets that were empty by the end of the day. Okay, I'm just saying, <clears throat> which we were absolutely fine with, because we didn't want a bunch left over. But we have a second service this morning, so take what on your chair and and if you're like, I really would love to get some more, then wait till after the second service and whatever's left, you just fill your pockets with them. But this is just a little way for us to, uh, this is just a little way for us to say happy Easter to you and that you are loved. You can stick that on your mirror, you stick that wherever you want to stick that and, uh, and it'll be a fun little keepsake and, and remembrance. Hey, a couple things going on in the life of the church. I already talked real briefly about the, or let me say this. I hope you got a worship folder because in the worship folder, uh, we've uh, put the names of uh, everybody who, uh, you know, turned in cards and, and uh, donated towards uh, the 
the Easter lilies. You know, I was thinking, I was real worried this week, and for good reason, our, our white Easter lilies, I'm so glad Jesus rose from the grave because our white Easter lilies decided to stay in the grave, I think, or something like that. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little concerned. I don't know what that says, but anyway, don't read into that. Don't read into that spiritually. But, uh, but anyway, uh, thank you for everybody just who gave and just uh, and participated. After the service, I've already said this, but after the this, this service, Come place another flower on the cross, and then we're going to have the second service do that. And as you can imagine, we'll take some pictures of it as well, but isn't that just beautiful? And so, uh, so please take some time. And again, uh, if you want to take an Easter lily home, if you paid for one um, after the second service, please do. Please take one home. Next Saturday, oh, th- we're starting a new series today. Uh, uh, it's entitled, Called for a Purpose. Called for a Purpose. And we're, we're going to talk, and I'll, I'll kind of unpack it for us, but as a part of that service, excuse me, a part of that series, um, we have uh, Mark Bain. I don't know if you remember Mark Bain. He preached for us a few years ago. Uh, he is the director of evangelism and church planning for USA Canada region for, uh, for the Church of the Nazarene, and he's going to be with us next weekend. Um, in fact, he's going to be helping us lead a uh, training day on Saturday, and I would love anybody, what the training day is, is, is about on Saturday is, is talking about how do we create a culture of, of purpose, of calling? How do we create this culture of calling? So as a result of that, and we were thinking about this, this training just several weeks ago, in fact, a few months ago, and had it planned to, to do, and and we're inviting other churches on the district to come, and so we're hopefully going to see some folks here on next Saturday. And but I, we need to kind of show up strong for our church and be a part of that. If you're able to be a part of that day, I would love for you to say, "Hey, I'm I'm interested in helping to be a part of that." And you will be blessed. And it'll be teaching us as a church how do we create that culture of calling in our church. And and we need leaders. We need people to step in and listen to the voice of God. And so I thought about this several weeks ago about as we thought about that training day and what we're doing, I thought, what if we did kind of wrap the sermon series around this idea? And so that gave birth to called for a purpose. And so what does it mean for us to be called? I'm going to talk about that in a couple of weeks. Mark Bain's going to be preaching for us next Sunday morning. And you, will, you will love it. So just bring your, uh, bring your seatbelts and everything else because he uh, he's a hoot. So... Uh, so you will love his message next Sunday morning, but it's on the same theme. And then the week after that, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what does it mean to be called. And we're going to just talk about a number of aspects of, of this throughout the, about, uh, out the coming weeks. And so I want you to be prepared for that, but I want to invite each and every one of you, anybody who would like to, um, there is a, a cost to next Saturday, but we are, t- are going to uh, take care of the cost uh, as a church. If you're coming from New Life Church, we'll take care of that cost. And for everyone else, I think it's 10 bucks for that day because we're going to provide lunch, we're going to have some snacks and stuff like that throughout the day. So that's next Saturday, and I wanted you to be aware of that. The only other thing I want you to be aware of, check the worship folder for a number of things, but next Sunday, we're going to do our uh, church elections for our church board next Sunday and the Sunday after the 7th and the 14th. And if you are a member of this church, you are welcome to uh, participate in that. There will be a voting table out in the foyer. And if you're interested in membership, we already have a handful of folks who are going to be jumping in. If you're interested in church memberships, come see me today or or send me a message. Put it on the card. And uh, next Sunday, we're going to be receiving new members. So anyway, so that's a a lot going on. All right. The text that I want us to, to go through. You ready to dive in? Okay, good. All right. I didn't bore you with all those announcements, but I had to share them because there's a lot of good stuff going on. Um, The text that I want to share that kind of helps us with this series is out of Colossians chapter 1. And I really love the message version of this. Um, I don't use that very often, but I I love the creativity and the language of it. And and it's so accurate to uh, creatively to the the original text too. So I I just like it. and, And so I use it every once in a while. And so this is Colossians 1, 15 through 18. It says this. We look at this son. Now, who is the son? The son is, somebody say Jesus. Okay, good. Thank you. 
We look at this son and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this son and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, and he just wants to emphasize this, not just everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. This is the word of the Lord for us, and we say, thanks be to God, right? The, the, the idea that everything is designed and created for a purpose. You have a purpose, and so do we as a church. And so it's our responsibility and our privilege to begin to learn what that purpose is. Well, I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, have heard of the show Seinfeld. Anybody heard of the show Seinfeld, right? Hey, so anybody not want to participate? Okay, no. Uh, Seinfeld, what, one of the unique aspects of Seinfeld is that it, it was kind of known, if you will, for uh, not really having any plot whatsoever. It sort of just meandered through different aspects and humorous ways of, of these guys and gals living their lives and kind of meandering through one situation after another. And it was so successful, right? It was just, people are, reruns are watching all the, even today. But the reality is, is, is I think part of that success has to do with, I think it kind of struck a chord with people about the fact that I think some folks, and maybe even you, kind of feel like, you know, that's just life, right? Just kind of going from one thing to another, one situation to another, just moving through life, maybe with very little to no plot. And if you feel that way, never going anywhere, never arriving anywhere, I just, I just want you to know something and assure you of something, right? I want to assure you, again, this is what the whole essence of this series is going to be about. I want to assure you, you were called for a purpose. And I think it's so easy for us to get into routines of our lives, and there's nothing wrong with routines, right? Nothing wrong with routines. But if they don't lead us somewhere, if they don't bring a level of, of peace and satisfaction and fulfillment, maybe we just feel like we're just wandering around. In fact, the Bible teaches that each of us were made for God's purpose. And we are called to fulfill something exciting and meaningful. It's kind of this customized, personalized life purpose God has ordained to accomplish in each of us in order for us to help expand the kingdom and to bring him glory. So then the challenge again for us is in the discovery of that purpose and then living that purpose out. I think, of, uh, I think of this piano, as beautiful as this piano is, if it just sat never being played, it wouldn't be fulfilling its purpose. I, I think of a vehicle or a car or a motorcycle, and, and if it just sat, and I, I've got, you know, you do too, is this, we walk, drive around the city and we see cars just parked, and, and maybe they're just dead, and they're just sitting there and, and never being driven, never being cared for. And you would say, that, that car is not fulfilling its purpose. And so many of us, and maybe too many of us, spend a lot of time making a living, but not making really time of making a life. Let me say that again. Many of us spend a lot of time making a living, but not a lot of time making a life. We wake up every day, perhaps we do the same old thing. We get out of the same old bed, put on the same old clothes, walk into the same old kitchen, eat the same old food, and go to the same old job and work with the same old people, pay the same old bills, endure the same old routine day in and day out. Does that sound familiar to anybody? We just go through our life. 
And again, there's nothing wrong with routine if it's tethered to purpose. You see, that's the difference between merely existing and actually living as we were created, as we were called for a purpose. So here's what I'm proposing for this, serv- uh, for this series, this sermon series over these few weeks, is that you and I have a purpose, and it's found in Christ, only in Christ. That purpose is discovered in him. Some may say, well, what do I need Jesus for? You know, I've, I've, been, I've got talents and strengths, and I can live my life on those and find purpose with that and be satisfied. And I guess my questions are to you, I mean, what are your purposes for? Or maybe even another question is, who are your purposes for? Because a lot of time, living our purpose is to have some sort of self-fulfilling purpose. And I think Jesus calls us for something more. We're needing to find our purpose. And by seeking God with all of our heart, soul, and mind, we, we will draw out this personal purpose for us that God has designed perfectly for you. It's unique. And my prayer is, is that you discover that purpose. You discover that calling. As we dive into the word, as we discover what God has to say to us, that you begin to discover What is God's purpose for my life? And I know that as I've asked several people over the weeks and months and even years, and I've had this conversation with people and talked to them, says, what's your purpose? What's your calling? And I would say nine times out of ten, and that's not a a pastoral exaggeration, but nine times out of ten, people would say, "I, I I don't really know. I'm not sure. And I want us to begin to have some assurance today and this month. I'm beginning to know, you know, I think God is leading me here. And that may shift over the years a little bit. It may not. It may be a multiple of things. It may be a couple, two or three things that are significant to a calling that God has placed in your life. But that's what the coming weeks are going to be about. And I would love for you to join me in that journey. I'd love for you to join me in that process of, of really being able to understand our calling. Because I think it'll make a difference for your life, for our church, our community. What if 100 people, 150 people who are part of New Life Church began to live out their purpose that God has created them to live out? Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, I'm excited about what this, these few weeks are, and I hope you are too. But today, today is all about Jesus. It's all about who? It's all about who? It's all about Jesus today, right? It's all about him. Jesus had a purpose. He had a purpose. He models for us this relentless pursuit of what fulfilling our purpose looks like. So I thought on Easter Sunday, no better Sunday to be all about Jesus, for one, but no better Sunday to begin this series and begin to help us to see he models for us. Jesus gives us the example of someone who is committed to a purpose. And so understanding his purpose can help us in in understanding how to follow him and follow his lead. So what was Jesus' purpose? So I want to suggest a couple of things that, that I think will really help us. But as we do, let me just show you this text from Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you want to be my followers, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? What's your purpose If my desire is to just seek after my purpose, to to fulfill my own self-fulfilling purpose of my life, listen, listen, I may gain the whole world. But what good is that if I lose my own soul? Your purpose is found in Christ. 
He gives us, every single one of us, we are created by God for, for his purposes, and he designed us perfectly, and he's teaching us. He's saying, listen, if you want to, if you follow me, carry your own cross. Say, what does that mean? I said, kind of carry, like, listen, we need to recognize that, listen, I'm going to give my life to him and follow after him, and he's going to teach me. And I don't want to hang on to my life. I want to surrender it away. And, and it seems like a, it seems like so antithetical. It seems so, like, that doesn't seem like, if I give my life away, how am I supposed to live with purpose? But Jesus said, no, hang on. When you give your life away, I'm going to show you such a God-given purpose that will bring you so much fulfillment and joy. And you'll impact people's lives. So, how do we follow? How, what does that look like for us? Well, I think we need to learn what I think, as we see in the Gospels, what Jesus' purpose is. So I'm going to suggest these things to us. Number one, if you have your sermon notes or follow along in your, in your app on the sermon notes, you, you'll see these here too. But the purpose of Jesus, number one, to reveal, what is that? Let's read the number one together. Here we go. Reveal the kingdom of God. To reveal the kingdom of God. That, that, was, that was, I would suggest to him, one of two of, of the major purposes of Jesus. Look at this scripture from Luke chapter 4. But he replied, meaning Jesus, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns too. Because why? That is why I was sent. That was why I've been sent on earth, is to proclaim the kingdom of God. What does that mean? It means he's trying to teach us how we ought to live as followers of him. And where he's trying to teach us what the kingdom of God, as a resident of the kingdom of God, how am I supposed to live? I, I, I think I've used this illustration before, but I, I think of my own kids, right? And what does it mean to be a hazel? And as, I was ra- as Cheryl and I were raising our kids, and we, we were talking about what it means to be a hazel, that even if you're in this house, Right? Certainly we're hazel. This is kind of how we act. This is a, that's not how we act, so let's, let's stop that, right? But this is how we act. This is what I mean. But when we're out of this house, where, whether it's dad or mom or, or, or son or daughter, when we're out of this house, you still represent the hazels based on your last name. And because of that, how are we supposed to act? How are we supposed to? And so I was teaching them. This is the best illustration I have. It's not perfect, but, 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 but I, try, I was trying to teach them what it means to live a life that represents who we are. And so I did the best, and Cheryl and I did the best we could. And we're so blessed that, that our kids are, are, are fantastic kids. And, and we all are without, I, I've said to many people many times, that, you know, I've done enough to... Uh, probably have my kids have to have counseling over the years. But anyway, but, uh, but we, we tried to teach them that. And what Jesus did in trying to teach us the kingdom of God was try to teach us what does it mean to be a follower, how to act, how to live with the fruit of his spirit. You see, the kingdom of God, listen, I think this is really important for us. The kingdom of God really was established at creation in Genesis chapter 1. Right? The, this 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 perfect image of the kingdom of God was established in Genesis 1. We also see that it will be because of sin and brokenness that, that it is lost. I mean, all we have to do is we barely have to turn on the news anymore, you know, to, to recognize the brokenness of our world today, right? And so because of that, Scripture teaches us that it will return to its original plan in the end, Revelation 22. We know the end of the story. That the, the kingdom of God, as he designed it, but will be restored in Revelation 22, as it teaches us in the end, when he comes again. But in the midst of the brokenness, in the midst of the brokenness, Jesus, or should I say, God the Father, sent his one and only son to die on you and I's behalf. And the, to reveal to us Jesus revealed to us through the life of Jesus, through his life, through how he taught, through what he, through, as we read the Gospels, he revealed to us what the kingdom of God was to be about. And it was established in grace and truth. To do what? 
to teach us and disciple us. This is what it looks like, he would say, to be my apprentice, my follower, my disciple, a Christian. This reminds me of, uh, as I was preparing for this message uh, this week, I, the, the Lord's Prayer came to my mind, right? And I want us to read it together as, as, as the Lord's Prayer. I want to read it together. Here on the screen, I underlined the part that I'm going to emphasize, but let's read the whole thing together uh, 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 first. Here we go. You ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Right? So as we, as we, yeah, amen and amen, right? But as I think about this Lord's Prayer, what kind of jumped to my mind was remembering this part in the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us how to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Will your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven? So you know what that tells me? That tells me that as we learn to, to, to be kingdom-minded and kingdom people, kingdom followers, that we learn about the kingdom, that we are getting a snapshot of heaven, of how we love one another and forgive one another and show kindness and generosity and goodness and share faith and, and be able... We want to see uh, uh, people to, to join us in heaven. And so that is kingdom living. So what did Jesus, what was his purpose? First and foremost, Jesus taught us how to be like him, how to be kingdom-minded. And finding our purpose in Christ will bring us this fulfillment and joy and satisfaction in life and so much more, right? And so I may be, my calling may be a pastor. My calling, I saw Job come here, might be the, the best port of San Diego president that there ever was i think i gave him a promotion but anyway but (laughs) but but the reality is 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 that he is still as as am i still a a believer in christ kingdom minded living out and fulfilling and that purpose of where god has called me to not just my vocation because it might be something, there might be something added to Job's life and, and what that God calls him to, that he is continuing to be fulfilled in. And same with me. And I want to live out that purpose. But I want to be kingdom minded because Jesus taught me what it means to be kingdom minded. Living as Jesus teaches us to live is what he invites us all to to do. Look at Matthew chapter 16. If any of you wants to be my followers, you must give up your own way. Remember, this was the verse, this is just one of the verses that I read at the very beginning of this little part. To give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. Jesus taught us to be kingdom-minded. The second purpose that I think Jesus teaches us was to do this, is to seek and save the lost. That's what his purpose. Look at this, uh, this verse. In fact, this, this verse from Luke chapter 19 comes from the story of Zacchaeus. Remember Zacchaeus? Wee little man and a wee little man was he, right? Climbed up. I can sing the song. but So he climbed up sycamore tree because Jesus, he wanted to see. And Jesus said, come down here, Zacchaeus, for I'm going to go eat at your house today, he says. And so they went to his house, and God had already been working on this tax collector, this guy who had stolen so much money from so many people. And when Jesus and his tax collector friends and Zacchaeus were all at Zacchaeus' house, Zacchaeus says, I'm going to give back everything I stole from people four times the amount. I'm going to just, and and Jesus said, Jesus says that salvation has come to this home today. Then he says this in verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who were lost. What was Jesus' purpose? To, to, To show us the kingdom of God and to come and seek and save those who were lost. Let's be really clear. Only Jesus can save someone from their sin. 
until you live a sinless life and die on a cross for all creation, let's leaving the saving of lives to Jesus. Huh? Can I get an amen for that? Right? That's his job, not mine. But he invites us to help seek others. He invites us to be a part of this. His purpose, he invites us to be a part of with him. To share the good news. He does the saving, but we get to participate. Sometimes it's planting a seed. Sometimes it's watering it. And at times we get the blessing, which I think is the the pinnacle of a Christian's life. I truly believe this. The high point of a believer's life is helping to lead someone else to faith in Christ. And yet so many of us have never experienced that. He invites us into that purpose that he that is his. This was his purpose. And again, I, I, just one more little illustration, reminder of this, but see if this purpose just doesn't scream out to us about the purpose of Christ. In John chapter 15, we read of three stories in John chapter 15. You're going to have to go read these for yourself, the whole of these uh, on your own. But in, the, in John chapter 15, we, we learn about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. The lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And he tells these three stories in a row trying to teach us something. And at the end of each of the stories, he kind of gives this proclamation. Look at this. At the end of of the lost sheep, uh, he he says, this is verse 7 of chapter 15. He says, in the same way, right? The lost sheep was, there was 99, he went, the 99, say 100 sheep, 99 stayed in the pen, one went away, right? And so the, so the shepherd went out and found the one and brought him back. And he says this, in the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. Right? Does this, do you see his purpose just kind of dripping from these words? Look at the next story. This was the lost coin. person lost a coin. They turned their whole house upside down in order to find this one coin. And it says at the end, this is verse 10 of chapter 15. It says, in the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. And then the last story is the story of the lost son, right? The son who, who took his, his inheritance from his father, half of, half of the father's uh, uh, income for his inheritance and, and went and spent it wildly and all along the father was so generous and so kind of above and beyond and the son ended up coming home and had a, his older brother was like I'm not sure about this guy but, and so you know the whole story but at the end of that story this is the heart of the father which speaks of the purpose of Jesus in verse 32 he says we had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and he came back to life he was lost and now he is found. Friends, to Jesus, you were one of the lost sheep. You were, or maybe you are, one of the lost coins. You were, maybe you are, the lost son or daughter. And he went to the cross for you. That was his purpose. His purpose in life was to go to the cross for you and for me. He wanted to show us the kingdom. This is what it means to be a follower, to be an apprentice of mine. But I I came to seek you out, to find you. Aaron, why don't you come on up, would you? As he does, let me recap this. First thing we talked about, God created everything for a purpose, right? And everything and everyone finds purpose in him. So what's your purpose? What's your purpose? But today, as I said, it's all about Jesus, right? He modeled what living an earthly life with purpose looks like. You're like, well, I'm not Jesus. 
That's true, but God has given you a purpose to live out, and he's modeled that for us to, for us to look at and say, I'm going to follow with that kind of tenacity, with that kind of passion. I want to follow the purpose he's specifically given me. He showed us the kingdom of God and invites us to come and follow him, like live like he taught, be his apprentice, his follower, his disciple. But he also came to save us from our sin and came to the cross for you and for me. And he invites us to share the good news to others. You or I can't save anyone, but we can help someone see Jesus in us. Over these next few weeks, as I've said, I'm praying that through God's Word and His Holy Spirit teaching us, that we would begin to understand and hold on to, identify, articulate what our purpose is in this life. And maybe like Jesus, maybe it'll be a couple of things, as I said. Do you want to know your purpose? I do. And I want to live that out. But let me end with this, what I think is a very profound thought. And I hope it just sinks in for all of us, and Lord, help it to sink into my brain. And that is this right here. That knowing your true purpose begins with knowing Jesus. Knowing your true purpose begins by truly knowing him. You may be here this morning and you, uh, you're saying, you know, I, I, I've been a believer for a long time and I want to know my purpose. I want to live that out. I want to articulate that. Can I just encourage you to get to know him better? You may be here this morning, you say, you know what? I've never really made a decision to follow Christ. Never. I've talked about it. I've been to church. I'm here today, you know, Easter and, and that. And, but I've never made a decision to invite Christ into my life. Can I just encourage you? What better day than on Easter Sunday to say, Jesus, I surrender. <laughs> and I give myself to you. Let's bow our heads. Would you bow your heads with me? In fact, let's stand. Would you stand? Stand, let's bow our heads. What a wonderful day we've had today. But I think it would just be so wonderful if today if God is speaking to you this morning and you're saying you know what I'm ready to take my next step toward him I'm ready to take a step and if that's you this morning I just want to encourage you to listen to God be bold have courage that step with everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed it's, it's, I know it's kind of dark in the sanctuary and I'm not interested in embarrassing anybody but if you have never made a decision to follow Jesus and just invite him into your life maybe you've been dancing around it maybe you've been kind of thinking you think, I, I, but I want purpose I, I want that fulfillment I long for that and just recognizing that, knowing that purpose, that true purpose begins with knowing you. I want to know you, Christ. I want to know you. I may not have all the answers, but I want to take this first step. And if that's you this morning, would you just lift your hand? Just lift your hand where I, where I can see it. Just lift your hand. Say, Pastor, that's me. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. 
I say that out loud just to acknowledge the fact that I think God sees you. When you lift your hand, God sees you. He sees you. Lord, for those who lifted their hands right now, I, and, and for those who lift your hands, would you just pray this simple prayer after me? Pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I ask that you forgive my sin. Forgive my past. Forgive me and how I've just walked my own way. Today, I give my life to you. Today, I invite you into my heart. I want to know my purpose. And I choose to follow you. In your name I pray. Amen. If you're here this morning and you have been a believer for a long time, or maybe for months, or maybe for years, I, I don't know. But you're saying, you know, I need to get to know Jesus a little better. And on this Easter Sunday, 2024, I just want to know him better. Understand how to live the kingdom. Understand how to seek and save those who are. I want to participate in what Jesus calls me to be a part of. And if that's you this morning, just as a step of faith, maybe it's been a while since you've done this. But would you just lift your hand? Just lift it up. Say, that's me. Yeah. Anybody else? Good. Thank you. Be honest with you, I'm lifting my own hand. Lord, I want that. I want to know you better. I just want to know you more and more. Lord Jesus, for everybody who lifted their hand, would you, would you forgive us for how as, as believers we kind of tend to find our own purpose and maybe go through the routines of life and find our place, self in places where we feel maybe at times unfulfilled, we feel a little empty, we feel like, you know, what's this all for? What am I, doing? but God, would you just infuse in us your spirit and your word that would teach us what it means to live with purpose, that you've called us for a purpose. And so Lord, I just give myself to you and ask that you would teach us, you would guide us to knowing you better. That truly, in knowing you, is where we find our purpose. It's knowing you. So I just want to know you better. So even this week, help me to get into my word. Help me to spend time in prayer. Help me to spend time with you, Jesus. To just be quiet with you. And through that, you will be faithful. Thank you, Lord. Aaron leads us. Let's just be in the presence of the Lord. We've got a few more minutes.
I think we need to give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. He is risen. We'll do one more time. He is risen. I celebrate the decisions that were made today. We give thanks to God. We don't take that lightly. If you're guests with us, we have something for you, and I'd love to uh, uh, for you to respond to that. And just as a simple way for us to say thanks, plus I hope you take what you see on the seat there as well. And if you made a decision for Christ, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear that. Also, take a moment after service today. There's a sign over there that kind of gives some instruction of what the flowers, the color of the flowers represent. It's very cool. And put another flower on the cross. There's breakfast that starts right now. And, uh, and the Easter egg hunt at 1030 if you're sticking around for that. So stick around for a bit. Don't rush off. Uh, I think I heard it raining. Was I right about that? Stay, Lord, help us. Stay dry, and, uh, but stick around. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter. I love you. Thank you for being here today.